handle it. Cherry, we can come up with him. Because he, he can't handle it alone. Balance. You two balance each other out like I've not seen in most couples. A lot of couples complement each other and, and they, they you know they bring balance in that, but not to the severity that the two of you do. There is uh, you're hot and cold water. You are fire and water. You are all of the extreme ends of so many things. There's and it's not that you have fire and you have coal. It's today you're fire, today you're coal. It's tomorrow you're fire, tomorrow you're coal. You guys are all over the place. You're, there's no there's no consistency to, to the things that you're doing. There's just like stuff is scattered all over, but there's always the consistency in the valley. Yeah. It's, yeah. There is none that knows you like she. And there is none that knows you like he. And there is none that will protect you like him. And there is none that will guard your back like her. No one will go and fight for you like she'll go and fight for you. When you want to say something, you want to do something, she's already got the words in her mouth ready to come out and unleash on your behalf. And when you're ready to blow it, and you're ready to open your mouth, he's there to keep you from doing it. The things that you guys have that you operate in, that you flow with, are rare and unique. And God says, I'm not going to take those things out of you, but I'm going to magnify those things in you. I'm about to magnify and exalt those very things that keep your marriage secure and profound. I'm about to take everything that the enemy said is bad, and I'm about to show you that I'm going to use it for your good. There is nothing that God said. The God says there is nothing that I am going to leave from you in your marriage and from your family. Right now, the fears and the worries you have in Ty are illegitimate fears. God says, where is your faith in me? You love me and you love my presence, so why will I not take care of your son? Why will I not? God says, I will let him go and make his decision, but why will I not take care of him? God says, I love him more than you do. And I will not let the enemy defeat him, though I will let the enemy teach him lessons. There are some things he is going to learn, and there are some things he's not going to learn. There are some things the world's going to have to teach him, but there are some things God says, I will not let the world teach him. Others will be corrupted, yes, others will be corrupted by the things of the world, but I have him protected for my privilege. Because I have a valuable destiny for that young man. I have a wife for him. I have reserved and marked a woman for him. Many will try to come in. Many will try to take that place. Many will try to sweep him off his feet. But I have already allowed wounds in his life. I have already allowed hurt in his life. And he is already more wise than what you think. He is already more knowledgeable than what you think. And God says, in the areas that he is lacking, I'm going to fill that for him. Why are you afraid of what's going to happen to you? God says, I have him. Don't you worry you keep living your life and pouring into the children still under your roof. Now can we talk about Jesus? God says, I'm about to bring him out. But the world's trying to pull him through. I'm about to bring him out of something that the world thinks that they have and they're bringing him through. Yours is not to tell the world they are wrong. Yours is to tell him and chase about Jesus. Let the deliverer come into his life. Medication won't do it. The drugs won't do it. The world thinks that's what's going to bring him through and give him a life. I love what John Harkey said. We spend time medicating demons. We should be casting them out in Jesus' name. He is going to come to a deliverance point in his life. Where God is going to make himself so real in his life, he can be delivered instantly. It's not going to come because you tell him about Jesus. So you are going to be watering and sowing. You are going to be living a life of example. It's not going to be because you are always there opening your door or you are walking in tough love. It's not going to really have anything to do with you. God says, I have my hand on him as well. Why are you worried about him? God says, I want you to see in him what you see in Parker.
God says Chase is no different than Parker. God says, I have my hand on him. I have a destiny for him. And it is your faith that is needed to see that. When his grandparents and his parents and his other family members are pushing this and pushing that, I want you to push through faith and speak over him a destiny. Hallelujah. That is no different than what you see in your daughter. Because I have the same plan to remain for him that I do for her. Don't look at what you see with your eyes. God should believe that I have a destiny in mind for you. In his heart of Satan, his father captured him. I have angels dispatched to fight for him and deliver him. Psalm 91. George, I want you to read it. Read it. Charity, I want you guys to read it. I want you to get it. I want you to speak. I want you to write it out, print it out. And I want you to paste it on your refrigerator, on your bathroom, uh, on your living room, on the inside of your door when you leave your house. And I want you to just begin to speak that song over your entire family. Over everything more. Though a thousand fall or a thousand ten thousand are right. You're my shield. You're my buckler. I, I, all these things. Pestilence and plague is not coming to my house. Come on. All destruction is not coming to my house. Lord, I speak to my child. I want you to begin to declare with your mouth the words of God. Holy Spirit, fill this family. Not just the three that are here and chance in the back, but fill the family. Madison included. Fill the family, God. Ty included. Fill the family. Chase included. Fill the family, God. Yes. With the anointing of God. With the destiny of God. Patience is coming to you, charity. Patience is coming to you. Right now in Jesus' name, God says, I am bringing such a peace into you. Such a quiet and calming characteristic and personality to you. People will not, people will think you changed your hair or something. They're going to think you lost weight or they're going to think you did something, but there's going to be so noticeable, says God, that people are going to think you did something on the outside. That change your appearance, but God says, I'm doing something on the inside. That changes who you are and all about you. Holy Spirit, fill this family, God, with your presence, God. Father God, with just as much presence, God, as they can have. Father God, fill them with a confidence and assurance that you've got everything in control. And let the very words out of their mouth, God, be words that speak life into their family, into their community, and not death, Lord, but the words of life as they claim Psalm 91 for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give Him a praise right now. If you're a, if you're a family that needs that word, come on, all you got to do is say, I take that word for myself. Come on. I claim that word for my family. I claim that word. Maybe maybe I, I faulted and I erred in that. Maybe I should have spoke that over everybody. But I, And I believe that that word can be for each one of us. Some of you right now have children that are not serving God. You can claim that scripture. You know what? They are marked for you, God. They are marked for you, God. Marked for you. Is this your last Sunday? Are you guys heading on the road? No, Okay, but this is your last Sunday. Uh, for a while. Okay, come on. We're going to pray over these two prayers. Huh? Oh, for a week or two, we'll get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. I thought you guys were going on the road, leaving, going to the... Glory to God. We appreciate you. We love you guys. Thank you for... It is always nice to just have people who are yoked together with some, some same desires. Amen. And we're blessed in this church to have the people we do. Come on, everybody. Can you just stretch your hands? If you're close, just go ahead. Lay your hands on them. Come on. Just touch them. Touch them with the love of the Lord. Father, we just declare, Father God, a righteousness. And a righteousness that brings victory, God. A righteousness that brings protection. A righteousness not of themselves, but that was laid out for this earth to receive on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. There was a covenant established of righteousness. And I declare it over them, God, that the enemy does not have a legal right to come and accuse because they're righteous in the blood of Jesus. Amen. The enemy doesn't have a, the, the thieves right to come in and rob them because they have the righteousness of Jesus. The enemy doesn't have the privilege to come in because they have the privilege of the presence of God in their life. There is no open door, says the Spirit of the Lord. There is no open 
door because of the righteousness and the presence of God in your life. When you think the enemy has come and risen up, you just declare there is no right. There is no open door. Because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ in my life and the privileges of the presence of God on me. Nothing I've done, everything He's done. Satan, you are a liar. Father, we rebuke Him in Jesus' name and we declare...